because he's got a new book, How I Slept My Way to the Middle. Oh. All the way to the middle. All the way to the middle. Good <laughs> on you, Kevin Pollock. I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> Plus, it's time to start your holiday shopping. And more importantly, it's time for the AOTS Holiday Gift Guide. Yay! Yay! Which TV are we kicking the week off with? Well, here's a hint. It's got a giant gorilla glass screen. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Not that. That was my gorilla. Anyway, Not how that. was your weekend? <laughs> my weekend was awesome. I, I was with this group, Got Your Six, and we teamed up with a bunch of different groups. And we made... Uh, we filled up 5,000 backpacks for kids with like oh, all the healthy food. Nice. Yeah, look at that. That's 5, awesome. That wasn't even all the 5,000. Wow. But the coolest part about this thing was that I got to meet JJ Abrams. Oh! Yay! That's really awesome. And it's not even a good picture of me, and I think his eyes are closed, but, uh, <laughs> so, but I was very excited. You actually just went there to meet JJ Abrams. I didn't, didn't know he was going to be there. Yeah. No, I didn't know, I didn't know anybody was going to be there, and then I. Saw him and I was like, "Hi, can I get a picture with you?" <laughs> Super creepy, I'm sure. I love the fact that you had a geek moment. Yeah, yeah. I did. How the, was your weekend? My weekend was good. I was in uh, Vancouver and I was filming, filming Arrow. Arrow. Yes, which is, <laughs> which is, uh, it's a really good episode we've just done. Awesome. Episode Mary. 111. Yeah, you read it, didn't you? I did. She I snuck read it. into my dressing room and read the script. Oh. <laughs> and then she threatened to. Something like that. Something like that. I can't, no, I left and it then, around. No, that was it. I, I left it around. I was going to tweet out pictures of it. That's and it. And you would have gotten in huge trouble. I would have. So I would have. You, you know, and I got back, and this morning I woke up and I was watching the news, and uh, something really struck a chord with me, and it started to tick me off. What? Oh. Okay, I'm really going out on a limb here that all the female news presenters in LA look like hookers. <laughs> Put it out there. Also, everybody's, well, they it. everybody's thinking it, and I'm the one who's saying it. The lady, I'm not going to say who she was, but she walks on to do the traffic on one of the on the, the networks. The traffic. The traffic. Okay. She walks on. And what she, time is this? This is like 7 a.m. Okay. Okay. Right. Full whack on face or <laughs> makeup <laughs> that you could do that to a cake and flick it. Oh. She's got a dress that's skin tight. Louboutin shoes, okay? Well, there's nothing wrong with Louboutin oh. shoes. Yeah, but not when you're doing the traffic. <laughs> I think you can wear Louboutin shoes any time of the day. You, I will disagree. You, you can, but you can't take someone seriously talking about Iraq when they look like a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> was there, like, lots of cleavage and really, Her really Her cleavage short? was so far up, she was belting herself in the face. <laughs> okay? Now, when I watch the news, I want you to look dowdy. Yeah. I want you to look... Especially with traffic. Yeah, I want traffic... That's not going to help the traffic at all when you look... That's, in fact, yeah. going to distract you. <laughs> Definitely. All right, anyway, that's my rant and that's for a Monday. that's more for a nighttime show, I that think. Is, that is, that is. That kind of dress. All right. You want to run down the top? You always look good, by the way. Oh, you're oh. so sweet. You know what? Because someone will say, well, Candace wears tie heel shoes, but you know what? She dresses age-appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> all right? Ladies doing the news in L.A., not age-appropriate. If you're 50, act like 50. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go around the web. Yeah. The net. We're going around. <laughs>
Dave, this is uh, John Barrowman and Candace Bailey from Attack of the Show. We're live on air. Um, Hi, how are you guys doing? We're good. good. We just saw your commercial. And you know what? We're a little bit hungry. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, what, what's something that, we, what's your best thing you can do for us? Uh, the large combo is the, is the most popular pizza here at the store. Okay, and uh, Candace, no olives, any? No olives. Well, so we'll have a large combo with olives. No with, olives! With, no, with no tomatoes olives. and olives and maybe some meat. Some meat. <laughs> some meat. <laughs> That's it. All right. All right th listen, uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, you get that pizza going, okay? And okay. you might have, su have a surprise coming your way, okay? All right. All right. Thank Thanks, you so David. Much. Thank bye, you so bye. much. Have a good day. You too. Okay. Oh. All right. This is awesome. If you are in the Stockton, California area, then go and hit up David's Pizza on Hammer Lane. We have got a free combo pie ready for you to pick up under the names of John and Candace. Yes, two catches. It's first come, first served, and you have to photograph or video yourself picking up the pizza and eating it. Now tweet us your proof at AOTS, and we will feature it in either today or tomorrow's show. Oh, yeah. That's fun. I like this. Hurry up and get it in today. Come on. Yeah. I'm so hungry, though. I still want some pizza. Oh, well. Moving on. Uh, people are always asking, when did journalism die? Well, this 1984 clip from the Today Show is the exact answer. Right here where it says put one slice. We heard, I am the devil. Uh, what kind of voice did the devil have? Um, a, a very low voice, I'd say, sounded like Eli Wallach. Have you saved any of this satanic toast? Yes, I did save it because I wanted to be sure that somebody else would see it. Satan lives. Uh, just terrible. <laughs> Why did you kept this toaster? Well, when all is said and done, it makes good toast. <laughs> ah, true story. The producer of that item went on to lofty achievements like writing the Weekly World News and becoming an executive producer of the Jerry Springer Show. Jerry! I Jerry, can't say it. Jerry. Listen, another story. I have a milk frother that sounds like Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Pizza. I love his dance moves. <laughs> We're a little off. I went, I went the wrong way. It's the That's story okay. of my life. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, an oldie but still a goldie. A mattress commercial for people who spend a lot of time in bed watching Star Trek on Netflix. <laughs> space, the final frontier. Hi, Captain. You can choose your space with a Serta. Don't cling on to that old mattress. Dual Comfort Serta mattresses let you have softer firm on the same mattress. Boldly dream like you never dreamed before. Beam on board to the side that's right for you. And the dogs set your savings for stunning. Captain, you won't be undersold. Nick gets soft. <laughs> A logical choice. Live long and sleep. Yeah! Live long and sleep. This commercial is a travesty. Oh, <laughs> They're wearing original series uniforms. <laughs> Plus, the Klingon makeup that didn't debut until Star Trek The Motion Picture. <laughs> and don't even get me started on next-gen era tricorders. <laughs> and those face pistols from Enterprise? Why didn't they just show Scott Bakula making out with a Vorda yeah. for Pete's yeah. sake? Yeah. Good, good point. Good point, John. Thank you. And they couldn't even afford actual Klingon masks. No, no. The masks that they had were like uh, superimposed. <laughs> oh, but I think, oh, I think that might be my favorite part of the commercial, actually. Oh, it's so bad. And finally, we have a video from Korea that's just as cool as Drive, minus the Ryan Gosling. Xbox, no video games, which means they have to li live Grand Theft Auto in real life. Oh, well played, Korean Jason boy. Yeah. Well played. Goodbye, Internet. We will meet again.
probably tomorrow. Still ahead, we talk about YouTube's massive push into online entertainment. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Whoa. It all happens after this very short break. So stay tuned. This year, YouTube decided to take on Hollywood by giving a ton of money to independent producers for all new original video content. Has that experiment paid off for YouTube? And what's the next step for them? Joining me now to discuss the digital editor for Advertising Age, Michael Learmonth. Welcome, Michael. Thanks. Now listen, it's been almost a year since YouTube invested $100 million to create over 100 channels. So what, what have they learned in terms of what works and what doesn't work? I think what they've learned is what works on YouTube is what's always worked, and that's comedy, celebrity news, music, uh, cartoons. Um, so over the first seven months of this project, the, the most successful programmers have been the ones that, have been on, that were successful previously on YouTube. Now, I, I'm kind of new to the aspect. I didn't realize that YouTube was doing this uh, sort of thing. Uh, and when we were discussing it today, for me, is that, does that mean YouTube's trying to compete with major TV networks now and they're going to try to take over with original programming? V very much so. This is an overt competition with TV. Google's out there looking, where's the biggest pot of ad dollars that we can go for? They've already take, you know, they're, they're already making more than print. They've already vanquished, you know, all all types of other media, TV is the one area they really haven't tapped, and that's where the most ad dollars still still are. So, I mean, in terms of just uh, talking off the top of my head here, uh, some a, a network that such as uh, you know MTV that kind of changed their whole uh, span of stuff and no longer do music videos. This is where you know people could have there could be a music video channel that someone then could totally tune in to see what's current in music as opposed to going to a bigger a bigger network on TV. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Google really sees this as the reinvention of cable. I mean, cable kind of came on the scene in the 80s. They really see this as, as the next step in video entertainment, where there are literally thousands of channels out there, all self-supporting, all probably funded by ads, and, uh, and people sort of pick and choose what they want to watch when. So what sort of traffic are these particular channels getting? What, you know, um, the most popular ones? So the most popular ones that YouTube has funded are getting about a million views a week, which is really minuscule by media standards, right? But, um, you know, I, they think it's a pretty positive start, and they think that there are some channels that are showing some, some promise. Um, there are some channels that have exceeded, you know, 50 million views in the first, in less than a year. So I think that's pretty good by anyone's standard. Okay. Now, you reported uh, today that YouTube is going to give uh, a second round of funding to 30 or 40 percent of its channels. Who is likely to stick around, and who do you think will be the ones that will suffer? And, and uh, literally, bye-bye. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, the top channels, obviously, many of them will get new funding. But, you know, some of them will say, we don't need it. Some of them will say, you know, we're making, we're doing fine on our own, because this funding comes with a catch. They have to pay it back through ad sales. So some of them are going to say, we're doing just fine without the funding. Um, I think YouTube will reinvest in channels that are getting lots of views, but they'll also reinvest in channels that are looking more and more like TV. What they want to do is to get people watching longer and create a more TV-like experience so uh, they can actually show more ads within the shows. Do you think a battle might ensue? Because the people that want to stay around, the channels that are saying, you know, we can do fine by ourselves, in terms YouTube run this whole thing, could they m be muscled out, the smaller channels that they don't really want anymore? Oh, yeah, no question about it. I mean, tons of channels that launched with a lot of fanfare this past year will go away. The ones that didn't do so well, look, there are a lot of studios out there and, and networks learning YouTube with YouTube's money right now. They're experimenting. And some of these experiments just aren't working, so they're going to go away. Now, what else can uh, YouTube learn, literally, from what they've done over this past year? Because in a way, it sounds like it was almost, an, uh, in terms of an experiment, that's really kind of blossomed. Yeah, you know, it's an experiment from all sides. And the good news for Hollywood is YouTube was paying for everything, so it's great for them. Uh, I think YouTube has learned that, you know, some of the, you know, serialized programming, you know, like the CSI or, or 
shows that you'd watch on television aren't necessarily working so well on YouTube. There is a kind of content that's native to YouTube that works well. I'm not saying that that's going to be what works forever on YouTube. People are watching longer and longer shows there. Uh, but I think that that's what's worked early on. Listen, Michael, thank you very much. Uh, you've, you've taught me a lot this afternoon. Uh, everybody, Michael Learmonth from Advertising Age. Still ahead, Matt Myra sho shoves a 55-inch TV down your chimney. Relax, he's an expert. He knows what he's doing. Plus, we head to the Arizona Taco Fest. Yes! That sounds like a darn good time. Relive the classic battle between good and evil when G4 brings you heroes. See the entire series four hours at a time every Tuesday on G4. <laughs> got annoying loved ones demanding holiday gifts? Well, we've got your back. Because Christmas has come early, everybody. It's Matt Myra. And the worst Christmas present you could imagine. Oh no! Come on. Okay, so what are we? Uh, we're recommending today. We've got uh, gadgets all week. We've yeah. you know from the holidays yep. for the holiday season. But this today is a very big thing. What? <laughs> Look at that, everybody. Yeah, John, we're recommending uh, a TV to start things off for the week. You probably want a TV on your list, right? So we're going with Sony's HX 850 LED backlit television. Whoa. Let's dive in, and I'll tell you why I think this is great. <laughs> we didn't need to literally dive, John. Oh. OK, here we go, everybody. This is the flagship. Uh, everybody's got a flagship now. Panasonic's got a flagship. Samsung has a flagship. This is Sony's flagship television. It's the H. X850, and I think it's a good-looking television. We're just gonna go by design right now. I'm talking about how simple it looks, how sleek it is, how thin it is. It's a, it's a very pretty television, so when it's off, it'll look good. Clean, simple lines. My favorite design television of the year, I will say. Really? Yes, I just said it. It's got an excellent base, too. Uh, now, if you were to pick this up, you'd notice it's kind of heavy, and that's because Gorilla Glass. Oh. Huh? Yeah, so you're left with a very scratch resistant. Okay, don't break it. <laughs> I thought it was indestructible. No, Gorilla Glass is just scratch resistant. It's not indestructible. Uh, there's plenty of ports on here, too. There's four HDMI. There's also component and composite if you're still using those old timey things like I am sometimes. Uh, but those face the wall, so you gotta be aware of that. If you're gonna wall mount it, uh, you're going to need a little space back there to put those cables right in the middle. Yeah, you think they'd get it right by now. Put it right in the center. You would think that, but, a pipe you know, in the wall and right through the center. Pipe in the wall. Listen to this guy. Yeah. All right, let's talk about picture. It's a 55-inch LCD uh, screen. Yeah. Gorilla screen. Yes. But let's talk. Is it better than a good plasma screen? Well... It's close, okay? Oh, wow. I like Plasmas are the way to go usually. Normally, uh, an LCD, LCD, you're left wanting more. You're wanting deeper, more richer blacks. Uh, but this really delivers. Color reproduction's excellent on this television. Contrast is a bit lacking. Uh, here we are watching the uh, Iron Man uh, 3 trailer, which looks very sad. I don't really want to see it, because I'll... Oh, oh be quiet. Oh, it's no, be good. stuff is happening I do not care for. Everybody loves a troubled hero. Oh, that's true. Just give him a bottle of booze. He's troubled. Uh, the X Reality. <laughs> Pro picture. Ah. This has X Reality Pro picture processing. Now it's a it's an engine that does an excellent job on the television. What it, Sony says, it'll break down the picture into uh, four components. You got texture, outline, contrast, and color. And what it actually does is it will sharpen one each of them individually. Now it doesn't look like a huge difference on that television right there because we're watching an HD stream anyway. But when you watch like YouTube content on this, yeah, uh, you know, say a grainy 480p YouTube video. It will smooth and sharpen it out uh, dramatically so. It's a huge difference, and it's really something I think that uh, a lot of other manufacturers are going to try to duplicate. Uh, it's an outstanding picture on this television. Okay, now this also comes with third dimension. Yeah, okay, that's... wait a second. What is third dimension? A fancy way to say... 3D, everybody. Yeah. It's 3D. It's got 3D on it. Uh, it. Actually, the 3D is not bad on this television. There's some slight artifacting, which I think is pretty common when uh, scenes are, there's a lot of motion in there. Uh, that's Spider-Man, in case you didn't know. Uh, he uh, got bitten by a spider, and uh, they made a movie about it. Phew, phew, phew. Again, that's two movies, same story. Anyway, but the image as a whole, very good. A little darker than I would normally like, uh, but that's common uh, with most televisions that have 3D. The viewing angle's on here, John. Excellent. You don't have to sit six feet in front of the TV. So I can do straight. that. You can, yes, please. That's what you can do, kids. 
you can get some workouts in while you're watching your 3D movie. Now, we should mention that if you're going to have this uh, on Christmas morning, you're going to fork over more money for glasses. What? 40 to 70 to $130 per pair of glasses. What? So if you have a family of five, give up your children for adoption. <laughs> All right, so the glasses are expensive, yeah. but let's talk about the apps on here. Netflix, uh, um, yeah. you know, uh, Hulu. Everything, everything you could want pretty much is on the television already. They crammed a lot of stuff in here. Uh, Sony store is there, so you can access things like Crackle, which is their video service like Hulu. Yes. There's also a Netflix button, which we have right up right now. You just hit the net Netflix button, and there you go. You're all set, ready That's to awesome. have some fun. You can watch a Torchwood, and then <gasps> John loses his shirt for some reason they wrote that in. <laughs> <laughs> the only real uh, omission here is HBO Go, but since it's your television, I'm assuming if you have HBO, just turn on HBO, kids. Stop getting everything right when you want. I did see someone in the UK demonstrating this screen, and they hit it, and they did break it. So, okay. I won't touch it, Sony. Don't hit your television. No. Huh? The, the Sony HX 850 costs 1,600 for the 46-inch model yep. and 2,000 for the 55-inch. Matt Myra. Tell us yeah. why people should have this TV in their living rooms this Christmas. Because for two grandkids, you're not going to do much better. This is one of the best televisions on the market for LCD, LED backlit. If you're looking for a TV for Christmas, you should move this right to the top of your list for Santa. Uh, quality picture is excellent. Really surprised me. And there's plenty of apps, too. But like I say, if you're going to use the apps, I mean, why have anything plugged into your TV in the first place? Because everything you connect to it is connected to the but internet. But also, it's probably better if you hardwire this than, than some yes. TVs. It's better hard to hardwire them than it is to do it through Wi-Fi. Yeah, because then you'll be left with a lot of blocky-looking oh, John Barrow. And also, it'll just go, find that spinning thing will come up, and it wants me to kill the TV. Anyway, thanks, Matt Myra! That's it for today's Gadget Problem, kids. And now, Arizona is trying to change its methy image with fancy gourmet tacos. Oh. Mm. Whether it's from a truck or I'm making them at home, tacos are one of my favorite foods. I'm in Arizona at the third annual Arizona Taco Festival because, I mean, really, who doesn't like tacos? Bring me into your world here. Why are you guys using fried bread over tortillas, man? We have a uh, project. It's called Resbot. And what we do is late night uh, Native American food. Okay. So we try to incorporate that a little bit just for, you know, a little bit of cross marketing. So, John, I want to take one of these from beginning to end. Can you walk me through it, brother? Oh, sure, for sure. We're going to use this rather than a tortilla. Yeah, the bowl shape is something that, that, we're, that we're striving for because it catches all the ingredients real well. Grab a spatula there. You put about two ounces of meat on there. That's it right there. Here we have the uh, strawberry jalapeno salsa that we talked about. Real easy salsa, you know. It's just that, strawberries, jalapenos, and a little bit of cilantro. Then uh, last, uh, we finish it off with a lemon zest cream cheese. Wow. I wouldn't even put this in a taco category. This is something all on its own. It's very reminiscent of like a gyro, like a, a Greek, oh, sure. uh, like a Greek like lamb sandwich with the onions and everything sure. I'm tasting. But then you get some strawberries and you get the cream cheese, and it, it just takes on a whole new life. Ah, thank you, Jordan. People are raving here at the Taco Festival about your duck tacos, which is different. I mean, I, nobody else is serving duck here. We do our duck confit that's been braised in du rendered duck fat for 14 hours. That's the braised duck confit. Awesome. Char roasted salsa, our fire and ice chutney, which is our homemade habanero hot sauce. That's it. Now, you're doing a little bit of pickled onions on the top here. It's actually watermelon, radish, and beet. Wow, OK, so that threw me for a loop. Who else is putting radishes on their tacos? Nobody. Not that I've seen out here. Yeah. Um, just lots of green onions. I'm a fan of Jordan's taco. I could probably eat it all day. What's bringing it home for you guys that's making these tacos so damn good? We I mean, take pride in time. I mean, I brine my pork, which takes okay. a full day. Yeah. Then I marinate it for a full another day. Then I dice it up and, I mean, braise it for six hours, you know? I mean, it's it's taking those extra steps to make the best quality you could you could ever have. Okay, so take me through some of the process of building these award-winning tacos. All right, so, I mean, we have our uh, our tortillas that we make in-house. It's a white corn, white corn masa. Then we take a little bit of our pork that, again, a little four-day process, and then a little bit of our pickled red onions just to give it, cut some of that, that sweetness with a little bit of acid. Just a little bit of cilantro, right? Avocado crema, which is made with uh, just some avocado, uh, serrano peppers, a little bit of roasted garlic, which is another step that we do. I mean, we roast our own garlic in-house, okay. and uh, we add that to it. 
nice. lime juice and salt, and then just some fatiha cheese. That is sexy. That is delicious. You get the heat from the meat, a little sneak up on there. Perfect balance. I'm speechless, um, other than can I have another taco? Yes, you can. So they just uh, told me that there is the grossest taco eating contest that's about to happen in here. Uh, for some reason, I just thought, wow, I should probably enter myself. I don't know why. Welcome to the Bizarre Taco Eating Challenge! Gentlemen, that is a hundred year old duck egg with cabbage, pico de gallo, and avocado. Bite number two coming right up. Imagine the worst freaking egg salad you could ever have, right? And then forget to wash your hands without toilet paper. Round two is fried silkworm larvae with avocado guacamole on a corn tortilla. If you ever been in the military and you have the MRE, known as the omelet MRE, <laughs> Just remember, gentlemen, Very similar to that, so not so bad. Ladies and gentlemen, taco number three is Cap's Testicle Taco with lettuce, pickled chilies, and mayonnaise. I just took my first bite, one ball in the mouth. I'm going to leave this Lance Armstrong up here. He said all I had to do one. That's all I do. Has there ever been a testicle fight at the annual there taco festival? <laughs> Coming in! Well, I've had my fair share of tacos for today. In fact, I think I've met my quota for this year. I got my nice sipping tequila now. I'm gonna go look for a place to take a siesta. Muchos gracias, Arizona. Muchos gracias. All the news you need to know. The feed, 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 feed. It's Monday, November 12th, and here are your top stories. First up, if you just bought an iPhone 5, Brace yourselves, because it might be out of date sooner than you think. Whoa! A report from the Taiwanese tech site Digitime says the next version of the iPhone 5 is already in the works. Unofficially dubbed the iPhone 5S, the report says 50 to 100,000 units of this new phone will be in production as early as December. That's next month! What the heck, Apple? The iPhone 5 was only released two months ago. Yeah! Ugh, well, needless to say, this is all too familiar to Apple's recent iPad debacle. You know, when they released the third generation iPad, a bunch of people bought it, and then they released a new iPad just months later. Yeah, my advice, Tim Cook, stop pissing off the customers. Yeah! Next up, it looks like Microsoft is building a language translator that actually sounds like your own voice. That's right, when you ask for a translation, instead of hearing that creepy computer voice, the translation mimics you. It works using tech called deep neural networking, which is a way of connecting computers so they work more like the human brain. Microsoft gave a demonstration at a conference in China. Take a listen. We hope in a few years that we'll be able to break down the language barriers between people. That's pretty cool. I'm assuming that was correct, considering the crowd's heavy applause, but it's hard to say. Uh, of course, the tech isn't perfect yet, but this marks a pretty significant step towards better computer language translation. Let's hear it for Microsoft. Yeah! yeah. You got it! And finally, some big news from Hollywood hit headlines today. Here's what's up. First, Star Wars Episode 7 officially has a screenwriter. Hey. Yes, Lucasfilm has confirmed Michael Arndt is on board. You might remember him as the brains behind the scripts of Little Miss Sunshine and Toy Story 3. Yeah. Yeah. Say what you will, but given Arndt's Oscar-winning history, I think this is going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, Next, set your DVRs, because Joss Whedon's cult classic Firefly is hitting the small screen tonight with one very special episode. In celebration of its 10-year anniversary, Science is airing a reunion special called Fire Fly Brown Coats Unite, and it has all your favorites from the spaceship Serenity, including Nathan Fillion, Adam Baldwin, Summer Glau, and more. Don't you miss it. And lastly, Brad Pitt is back on the big screen, this time as a father fighting zombies. Here's the latest trailer for World War Z. I think you're gonna love it. Take a look.
Um, that looks awesome. And those zombies move really fast. Um, World War Z will hit theaters next year on June 21st. I am Sarah Underwood, and you've just been fed. Coming up, Kevin Pollack will be here live with his new book and app. Stick around. The feed is brought to you by The General Insurance. For a great low rate you can get online, go to The General and save some time. Slept my way to the middle, secrets and stories from the stage, screen, and interwebs. The, <laughs> the very funny Kevin Pollack. Please, please. It's so not necessary. Why? Do that again? Why would they feel the need? <laughs> Everyone sit down. <laughs> All right, l this book is full of great stories throughout your career. I thought and... you were going to say crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, sure. it could be to some, yeah, it could yeah. be to others. Oh, no, it is. The, um... <laughs> as long as it sells. Yes. The, you worked with Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men. Correct, continue. Yes, and... Uh, Small uh... Jews for 400. <laughs> Let's play the pyramid. Everybody? Oh, no. All right. Oh, so it, was it at all intimidating? Someone told oh, yes. me I'm not going to be able to get through this interview, really. Uh, yeah, no, you're not. No. no. Was it intimidating of course. working with him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why? Well, because he's the coolest guy on the planet and has been for five generations. I mean, I, I figured you'd have to talk about Jack instead of to Jack. But he ends up being the most sort of goofball, gregarious person on the set, which I found kind of shocking. Yeah, because you think, I mean, most of the time you think if you were working, it would be very serious. Yeah. Very, nope. No playing around. Just silly. Um, <clears throat> I've never seen an actor turn it on and off the way he can. Uh, like in the courtroom scene when he's on the stand. Yeah. The director said action. He was letter perfect. Never missed a syllable. But when the director said cut, Jack looked like he'd been stoned for three days. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never seen that. So like, you know? Zoom. Yeah, action. You need me on that wall. You want me on that wall. Cut. <laughs> Robbie, where do I sit? <laughs> you, you also said he's like the best eater. Well, yes. The, the, the best eating, what is it? The best eater in on the film. history on film. On film. Well, the, the difficult thing about eating in a movie <laughs> is they'll do many uh, angles and coverage, and yeah. you end up, like, uh, the first time I experienced this was one of the first dramatic film I did, Avalon, Barry Levinson's movie, mm -hmm. where they shot a Thanksgiving scene. It took three days to shoot. Ugh. So you're eating turkey Ugh. 12 to 14 hours a day for three days. Ugh. So uh, my first real film. So I'm starving, unfortunately, on the first take, and I'm eating like a maniac. <laughs> and everyone's just staring at me like, newbie. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. So I learned very quickly that you, you, you do everything that you would normally do uh, while eating except the actual eating. So there's cutting, mm. a lot of cutting, a lot of moving <laughs> food around. If you watch movies now, you'll see the best never actually... Plus, you don't want to talk when you have a mouthful no. of food. Jack devours food. There's a scene in Preetu's Honor. He sits down to a bowl of pasta. Yeah. I'm telling you, you will not, you will not <laughs> believe it. Uh, rips through two or three slices of pizza... Uh, in another great movie, uh, I've just seen him and noticed this over the years. But doesn't he, do you not think, I mean, he must get sick of eating it all the time, because if he, mind you, he probably does one take. Yeah, there's that, and also the fact that he's blown up like a poisoned dog. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that joke I normally say for William Shatner. Yeah. But... Well, let's, let's talk about William Shatner then. Right. That's the first time I ever used it for Jack. It felt kind of wrong. Sorry. <laughs> no, it really worked. But there was a time in his life where he certainly did. The, yes. uh, William, speaking of William Two Shatner. Two Jakes. Two Jakes was the name of that time. <laughs> All right. That's the pizza movie. Yes. Gotcha. No. Nope. All right. William Shatner, you had to explain to him how you do his voice? Well, sure. Uh, <laughs> in, my, uh, in my book, I tell the story of uh, how... You know, I've been mocking the guy on TV every chance I got for maybe 25 years, and I got a call to come to his office and participate in one of his books. 
where I would describe for the reader how to do, in his words, the consummate Captain Kirk impression. Mm. He wanted to, st and I asked him why, he said he wanted to stop the annoying people from coming up to him and doing lousy ones, so he thought he would have someone show them how to do a better one. I don't know. <laughs> so it's a great, you know, for a monkey who does voices, this is as good as it gets, right? <laughs> so I race over to his office and thinking, I can't believe this is happening. Halfway there, though, it dawns on me, oh, no. Well, this is terrible. Now I have to say to his face, well, <laughs> Mr. Shatner, you were a lousy actor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gestured like a marionette and took pauses no one could explain. <laughs> I can't be the first to have pointed this out. You know? um, but just, I mean, even watching the way Captain Kirk would come into the room, uh, Bones, Scotty. <laughs> And they shot that show for three years. You know, you would think one director would have said, cut, whoa, Bill, what's happening? You all right? What's going on? <laughs> what is that? What does that mean? What's happening? You okay? Okay, you look a little strokey. Just checking. <laughs> Can you do that one more time, please? Sure. <laughs> Bone, Scotty. I love it. I love it. All right, so Don't you... try this at home. Oh. Yeah. Somebody did say that I would probably pee myself this interview, and I think I just have. Yeah. Um, you presented. Winning. <laughs> you presented a, an award to Christopher Walken, or you presented you. Uh, yeah. Well, he, you, but you'd never met him. I, we had never met. It was very odd. Um, <laughs> uh, he got the great ceremony of the hands and feet and the signature oh, yeah, of the the cement. The, sorry. Yeah. The Walk of Fame. Yeah. Even bigger than the Walk of Fame, actually. This is the one in front of the Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. Right. The Walk of Fame. You know, those are. You can get those for about 1500 bucks now. <laughs> Kim yeah. Kardashian wants one. Yeah, exactly. Which, by the way, I just found out you can check into her ass on Foursquare. Did you know that? <laughs> um, Thank you. I was the Thank mayor you. for like a minute. We've all, we... <laughs> That's so, such a lame, awful joke, but thank you for laughing. But, um, and, and, and speaking of lame, sure. there's some, like, lame credit on the Internet you've got with Christopher Walken. Yes, I do. Uh, if you Google the phrase Christopher Walken impersonation, over 100,000 search answers come up. Um, I'm number one. That's... <laughs> That's, right. a, that's, so, that's about as lame as so it So if gets. you're number one, you got to do a little bit of Christopher Walken Well, I don't know if you've ever interviewed Chris before, but let's do a thing where you'll ask me anything, and I'll answer. <laughs> but keep in mind, all of his thoughts are completely disconnected. Go on, go so so I, I, I saw you in a restaurant, and you were having macaroni and cheese. Yes. What was the thing that attracted you to that particular macaroni and cheese, Mr. Walken? Picasso was a hack. <laughs> No relevant. Putting eyeballs in the side of your face, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Remind me never to have Christopher Walken on the show. Yeah. So, all right, so you, you're, a, a, you're the t in the top also 150 of poker players? In the oh, uh, the World Series main event was just this last uh, month that finished up. And um, my first time in the main event, uh, 6,600 players start. Right. Uh, Hollywood Poker is a new play-for-free game on Facebook. Um, that we're having a big tournament actually uh, Saturday. It's very exciting. A lot of celebrities playing with people in real time and little chat rooms there. It's going to be pretty great. Um, but they sponsored me into this thing. 6,600 players start. I finished 134, which uh, was ridiculous. Did you win anything? I don't remember how much money I won, 52,718. <laughs> But Not it was, much. It was in there somewhere. Do you play poker on a regular basis then, I with do. mates and stuff? Or, and I do. Are you yes. in one of those kind of Hollywood circuits that Maybe. you play with? Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not saying that there's any out there. No. I might host a game Tuesday night. What's your point? I, okay, I don't play, but I'll just come and watch. Perfect. I'll serve drinks. Uh, no, no. We've got someone that does that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You've got to bring all that TV money. Yeah, all right. Yeah. What money? <laughs> I didn't mean the money from this. Oh! <laughs> oh, there's, there's none left that's getting canceled anyway. I love how everyone feigned shock. <laughs> All right, so you also, you're in your third year of uh, Kevin Pollock's chat show. Yes, sir. Do you, are, you enjoying, are you enjoying any uh, uh, more freedom, like, you know, no. in the third year? No, none. No, because it was incredibly uh, open and free and, and easy from day one. I mean, I sort of uh, created this thing out of, out of uh, thin air on, on the Internet where you can experiment and... and um, also own and control your content. Kevin Pollock's chat show, the award-winning. Um, <laughs> and now there's 160 interviews. I average about two hours with every guest. Just did two hours with Mickey Dolan's last Sunday. 
Um, but a lot of heroes, Eddie Izzard, Christopher Guest, you know, just yep. great, amazing people. Uh, but, but because it's online, there's no censorship, no time restraints. So we went with John Landis almost three hours. Found out Seth MacFarlane, like Jack Daniels, had a bottle waiting. <laughs> yeah, but it's that kind of freedom and fun, and uh, it became a thing. Listen yeah. to that, my kind of talk show. Thanks to Kevin Pollack, everybody. <laughs> How I Slept My Way to the Middle is in bookstores now, and make sure to check out Kevin's web talk show at KevinPollackChatShow.com. <laughs> Stick around, more Attack of the Show is right after this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tomorrow on Attack of the Show. Comedian and author John Hodgman will be here live to break down the end of the world with his book, That Is All. Then on DVD Tuesday, Chris Gore sifts through the latest flicks to hit shelves, including The Watch and Oliver Stone's Savages. And Matt Myra is here to tell you what camera to buy for the upcoming holiday season. It's Attack of the Show tomorrow at 7. Somebody picked up the pizza from David's Pizza and Ooh, shot yeah. video of it, but we haven't seen the tweet from that person yet. We know it's a her because the person second in line saw the person in front. Yeah. But here's second place, Amber Birchfield, who sent us a picture of her. Yeah. Yeah. Only David. And on top of that, he hooked her up with a gift certificate. That's nice. That is awesome. So we should then hope that tomorrow the the lady, the girl, or the woman who well, picked it up better, first, she, you rules. better tweet us or yeah. you're taking a free pizza, lady. No, don't do it. This is attack of the show. And we'll come and attack you. <laughs> Thanks to Kevin Pollack, yeah. Matt Lara, Michael Learmont, and Sarah Underwood. That's the show for today. We'll that see you tomorrow. Good night from my TV wife and myself. Yeah. Good night. Good night.